We have to have deals that are fair. And we have to have deals that are economic. Otherwise, that does, in fact, affect our military. Okay? But how do you make that case for autos specifically? Oh, it's very easy. It's economic. It's the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. To have a great military, you need a great balance sheet. Okay? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, as you were heading into these G7 talks, there was a sense that uh, the America's closest allies were frustrated with you and angry with you, and that you were angry with them, and that you were leaving here early to go meet for more friendlier talks with Kim Jong Un in Singapore. And I'm wondering if you, if you, if you view it the same way, and do you view the U.S. alliance system shifting under your presidency yeah. away? Who are you with, out of curiosity? CNN. I figured. Fake news, CNN. The worst. Uh, but, you know, I could tell by the question. I have no idea you were CNN after the question. I was just curious as to who you were with you with CNN. Uh, I would say that the level of relationship is a 10. We have a great relationship. Angela and uh, Emmanuel and Justin. I would say the relationship is a 10. And I don't blame them. I blame, as I said, I blame our past leaders for allowing this to happen. There was no reason this should happen. There's no reason that we should have big trade deficits with virtually every country in the world. I'm going long beyond the G7. There's no reason for this. It's the fault of the people that preceded me. And I'm not just saying President Obama. I'm going back a long way. You can go back 50 years, frankly. It just got worse and worse and worse. You know, we used to be a nation that was unbelievably cash flow oriented, had no debt of any consequence, and they'd build the highway system. We built the intern, you know, the interstate system out of virtually out of cash flow. And it was it was a lot different. No, we have a very good relationship and I don't blame these people, but I will blame them if they don't act smart and do what they have to do. Because they have no choice. I'll be honest with you, they have no choice. They're either gonna make the trades fair because our farmers have been hurt. You look at our farmers, for 15 years, it, the, the graph is going just like this, down. Our farmers have been hurt, our workers have been hurt, our companies have moved out and moved to Mexico and other countries, including Canada. Now, we are gonna fix that situation. And if it's not fixed, we're not gonna deal with these countries. But the relationship that I've had is great. So you can tell that to your fake friends at CNN. The relationship that I've had with uh, the people, the leaders of these countries has been, I would really rate it on a scale of zero to 10, I would rate it a 10. That doesn't mean I agree with what they're doing and they know very well that I don't. So we're negotiating very hard tariffs and barriers. As an example, the European Union, is brutal to the United States. They don't take, and they understand that, they know it. They, when I'm telling them, they're smiling at me. You know, it's like the, the gig is up. It's like the gig is up. They're not trying to, there's nothing they can say. They can't believe they got away with it. Canada can't believe it got away with it. Mexico, we have a hundred billion dollar trade deficit with Mexico, and that doesn't include all the drugs that are pouring in because we have no wall. But we are. We started building the wall, as you know. $1.6 billion, and we're going to keep that going. But a lot of these countries actually smile at me when I'm talking, and the smile is, we couldn't believe we got away with it. That's the smile. So it's going to change. It's going to change. They have no choice. If it's not going to change, we're not going to trade with them. Okay, how about a couple of more? Go ahead in the back. Thanks, Mr. President. Eliana Johnson with Politico. Yes, hi. Going into these talks uh, with Kim Jong-un, do you have a clear objective of what you want to get out of them? I have a clear objective, but I have to say, Eliana, that it's going to be uh, something that will always be spur of the moment. You don't know. You know, this has not been done before at this level. Uh, this is a leader who really is an unknown personality. People don't know much about him. Uh, I think that uh, he's going to surprise on the upside, very much on the upside, we'll see. But never been done, never been tested. Many people, the world leaders, I'm talking about world leaders that have been right next to him, have never met him. So we're going in with a very positive spirit, I think very well prepared, 
I think, and, and by the way, we have worked very well with their people. They have many people right now in Shanghai. Our people have been in uh, Singapore. Our people have been working very, very well with the representatives of North Korea. So we're going in with a very positive attitude, and I think we're going to come out uh, fine. But I've said it many times. Who knows? Who knows? May not. May not work out. It's a good chance it won't work out. There's probably an even better chance that it will take a period of time. It'll be a process. Is there a particular outcome that you would look for from this initial talk to judge whether you think things are going well? Well, I think the minimum would be relationship. You'd start at least a dialogue. Because, you know, as a deal person, I've done very well with deals. What you want to do is start that. Now, I'd like to accomplish more than that. But at a minimum, I do believe at least we'll have uh, met each other. We will have uh, seen each other. Hopefully, we will have liked each other, and we'll start that process. So I would say that would be the minimal. And the maximum, I think you know the answer to that. But I think that will take a little bit of time. Okay? Yeah.